Hello creatives, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to dive into Illustrator on the iPad once again, but this time I'm gonna tell you everything that is still missing in this program. I did do a video like this before, it is going to be linked on the screen somewhere, and you guys can go ahead and see that one. But today I'm going to showcase what still is not there and what really should be. I will also show you some little fun tips and tricks as well that you can only do on the iPad for Illustrator. So let's dive in. I have a very simple uh, 300 DPI A4 artboard. Oh, it's for print, so it's in CMYK. Um, I have not titled it yet because we're just going to overview this. Let's go over to the right toolbar over here. You'll see a whole bunch of tools and options over here. Let's showcase your properties panel, which is the second one. There's nothing here, so I'm gonna draw a shape. Let's choose a square. I'm gonna choose a color. Let's see, what color do we want? Let's do something fun. Let's do like a nice light lavender. For placing a shape, you can hold down this constraint over here, tap and drag with your Apple Pencil, and it'll constrain the proportion student to a perfect square, in this case, or a perfect circle if you're using a circle. That, always handy. Null the stroke, because we don't need that. Now, if I want to duplicate this shape, there's, two, well, there's like two or three ways you can do it. Press this duplication little icon right here in the Quick Selections toolbar that pops up and it'll duplicate. Two finger tap to undo. Hold down the constraint and pull till it turns bright white. And then tap and pull the shape and it'll make a duplicate shape. So that's a little nice handy trick for you. Let's say that this square is a different color. Well, let's just do a green. Let's be fun and do a green. Do a darker green. I want to make sure I save my swatches. I have gone over this before, but if you don't know how to save a swatch, scroll down in your color selector here, and then press the plus sign for whatever color you have already in your fill or in your stroke. And once you press the plus sign under swatches, it'll pop up right there. Let's say you wanted to select both of these. Drag your Apple Pencil across the screen and over both shapes, and it'll select both of them. The one thing that is still missing in this program is blends. And I'm not talking about blend modes, those are different. If you look under the properties panel over here, there is um, blend modes right down here under appearance. And those you can do multiply screen, overlay, soft light, and you'll see a lot of things happening on the screen. But what I'm talking about is something called shape to shape blends. Now shape to shape blends in the desktop version allows you to take two shapes, like these two, of different colors or different kinds, and uh, blend those shapes together into an array. And it gives you a nice soft blend, especially if you're doing something like portraits. They do have gradients, and gradients work extremely well. However, there are some cases where it doesn't work so well. So shape to shape blends are always handy to have. However, in this program, they're still not there. They're not in Pathfinder, or the combined shapes called Pathfinder on the desktop version. In the iPad, it's called Combined Shapes Tool. It's not there, it's not under a line. Under Object, there's Clipping Masks and Compound Paths, which are great, but they are not the same as Shape to Shape Blends. There's just no real blend options here between shapes. There's blend options when it comes to color and the reactivity of the color and the shape, like I showed before under the properties panel. Um, but those are modes, they're not really options. So there's no stages of blending, not even under path. That's still missing and it's quite needed because there's no smudge tool, there's no tool in here that can give you the effect of a blend other than gradients. But like I said, you can only get so far with that. So let's see what that looks like with a gradient. If you don't know where gradients are, they are under the color swatch over here in your left toolbar. 
you are defaulted to solid color, just go right on over and tap on gradient. And then there are three options for gradients. So let's do, let's just do the regular linear gradient for now. You can move these points because the points will pop up on the shape. You can move them. I'm just gonna move them kitty corner like this. When you want to change a color in the gradient, tap a circle, one of the swatch circles on the gradient, and then switch it to any swatch that you have already saved. Now, as you can see, this makes a kind of clumsy blend here. So if you wanted something to blend really well, it can be pretty difficult. If you wanna duplicate a color swatch in the gradient, you just select it, and then tap anywhere on the line. So then you will have to switch the colors as you go along, but this does make it pretty clumsy as far as getting the gradient exactly right to pair up with your secondary shape. With the shapes, you still don't get a blend from shape to shape in order to fill up all this space. So you'll have to fill that up yourself with more shapes and more gradients, but it just kind of just defeats the purpose of doing things more efficiently. And yes, you can save this document and open it up on the desktop version if you have a Creative Cloud account. However, that doesn't really work out so well if you don't want to take your laptop everywhere. And if you don't have Wi-Fi to access remote desktop on your iPad, which is another option you can use, but if you don't have access to Wi-Fi for whatever reason, that doesn't exactly help you either. It really is less efficient than just working in this program here on the iPad. Say, for instance, you don't have a full desktop setup and you only have an iPad, you're still pretty limited. That is honestly one of the only things that I can say that is still missing in this program. But there are some quick tips and tricks that I can show you with shapes and how to use this constraint selector. I call it a constraint selector, but it's basically a touch selector. I'm going to showcase these to you. So let's say I want to make this shape bigger. Shape is selected, hold, slide to either side. As long as this selector is bright white and bigger, you can then increase or decrease from the center the entire shape. So that makes things a lot faster and a lot easier and smoother with working. Let's just go ahead and undo that so we have room and space to work. I'm going to move him. Let's select this purple one here. And this one is also something quite fun. Um, if you ever wondered how you can rotate this and get it perfect. It's like, how do I know where the perfect angle is? Like, I just want it to snap and you can't get it to snap. It's really very simple. Hold down the constraint, slide to the left, slide to the top. I think it works either way. Slide up. Ooh, look, you can move the selector. I did not know that. Guys, I can move the selector. That's pretty cool. Okay. Anyway, um, so tap, slide your finger on the selector and then It'll snap to multiple angles and it'll snap in place. So that way you now have perfectly aligned shape with the angle. Those are just two tips and tricks that you can utilize with the selector over the touch selector over here. I find them quite handy. Let's continue on. Um, let's say you wanted to, let's just move this guy up here, touch slide from center, reduce the size, to move him up here. Let's say you wanted to draw on a path. Let's take this little guy here. Let's make something fun. All right, let's zoom in. And let's say you wanted to create, I don't know, a mouth. Let's just say that. I'm gonna change my color to black. I'm gonna choose the pen tool. And we're going to work on this. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, now. We have our mouth. Let me just increase this so you guys can see it better. Oh, let's increase it a bit more. There we go. So we have our mouth. However, I was clumsy and I didn't put my points exactly where I needed them. That's okay. You can always move your points. I'll show you how. So you hold down the touch selector. It's right here under my finger. Hold that down, select your point, and you can move it anywhere you need to within the path, as long as you're under the point selection tool, which is the second tool 
over here in the left toolbar. So you can move these anywhere you need along the path to put it in the correct position. Looks quite silly, doesn't it? Now you can duplicate your green shape again, holding the constraint, swiping to the left, selecting, and then moving. And then holding the constraint, tapping a corner, and then downsizing the shape to make it into a smaller shape. So there are quite a few fun tips and tricks that you can do with this. Um, you can also just duplicate it with the quick selection toolbar. That's always handy. If you want your shapes to stay in line with each other or align them to each other, you just hold down and press the constraint with the touch constraint with your finger and then just slide the shape over or up and down and it will align it to the center of the shape you already had. So he's looking quite happy. Let's get rid of this. Oh, if you want to delete something really quickly, just tap whatever shape it is. And then from the quick selection toolbar, just press the trash can. Very simple. So I'm gonna duplicate this guy. Hold down your touch selector, constrain it down, and I'm going to make some fun duplications. If you want to select more than one shape without having to tap and drag across the artboard because then that will select everything. For instance, if you have a shape on a shape, double tap to deselect, hold down your touch restraint or touch selector, tap, tap, tap. You can just tap as many shapes as you want and then you can move them all together. Look at that. It's a Minecraft character. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you find anything else that you think is really needed in this program that isn't here yet, go ahead and leave me a comment down below and I would love to hear it. I think this was definitely a lot of fun. I hope this video has been helpful to you, especially with these touch selector shortcuts. Let me know if there's anything you want me to go over, if there is anything you still have questions on. I will be more than happy to cover those in my next video. Give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you soon, creatives.